Hi, this is Dave Breiner from Synergist Technologies. Uh, recently I received a comment to one of my videos from Gina requesting if I could demonstrate a few iLogic rules in a drawing. She mentioned correctly that I hardly ever demo iLogic rules inside of a drawing, so today we're going to take a look into that by creating a few rules in a drawing environment. On the screen, you're going to see that I've placed a few views of a raised face sip on flange using my personal Synergist template. In this particular template, you'll see that under uh, my drawing resources and title blocks that I have already created uh, a number of Synergist title blocks, B, C, D, and E. If I go to my iLogic browser, and you can access that by going to the Manage tab and the iLogic panel, you can click on the iLogic browser. Under the Forms, I have already created uh, a title block info. And if you're interested in this, um, I did a video and a couple articles about creating this, I don't know, some time ago. And you can, I'll put a link to those. Um, that video and the articles in the description below if you're interested going back and seeing this. But you'll see that down below that I already have um, this created and I can go by and just select um, whatever size sheet I want and you'll see that it automatically uh, changes and, uh, and updates. But you'll also notice that my title block stays the same no matter what sheet I put up. And that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So that's one of the things we're gonna to address today. If I go to the rules under there, you're just gonna see um, real quick that I have my declaration that I created this back in 2015 with a simple description. You'll see the active sheet size and I have a parameter that calls out for sheet size and I have the list of the parameters underneath that. Underneath um, that uh, function, I just have a couple others, and I put these in a lot of my rules, and all it does is uh, update when done, and then uh, zoom the active view to fit the screen. So how about if we, um, let's start by creating a, um, a rule that'll change these title blocks. Now to begin, uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do is go to my parameters, and um, here's my current one, the sheet size, and you'll see that I just have a multi-value list for the other. So we're gonna create another parameter. I'm gonna create a uh, text parameter. And I'm going to name this uh, title block. Right. And then I'm going to, uh, to right click and make a multi-value list. In my multi-value list, I am going to type in the name of my title block, Synergist title block, and I'll say B. Uh, I'm going to uh, highlight that, and I'm going to, yes, I'm going to right click and say, uh, Control C and click behind it once again and then um, hit enter and I'm going to control V. I'm going to paste that uh, a couple more times. So I have my B. I'll come behind the second one. I'm going to backspace C and then backspace D and backspace E. So I have all of my um, title blocks I want to create and then uh, everything looks good. Uh, don't forget to say add, not cancel. And then once you're done, you can say OK. So in here, I have uh, my B, C, D, E title blocks. Now, one thing I do want to caution you on a little bit later, if I look under my drawing resources and my title blocks, all right, the actual name of the title block itself is um, a combination of upper and lower case. You can see how they differ. This is going to be the way I call it but this is the actual name of the title block I'll be used, and you'll see that when I create the rule. I do not want to get these mixed up 
although they're the same name, iLogic looks at them completely different because of the syntax. All right, so let's um, let's be aware of that. So I'm going to say done. And what I'm going to do is go to my iLogic browser. I'm going to right click. So I can either right click and say add rule, or I can just come up to the browser itself and click on add rule. And for this one, I'm just going to name this title block, title block rule. Real creative, right? So in here, and as I mentioned before, typically I would put my declaration up here, but I want to try to move this along. And I am always, I'm going to add a uh, if then else uh, function. All right, and in my expression, I am going to come up to my parameters and then double click on title block. And I'm going to say title block what? So I'm going to say title block will equal, and in quotes, and now this is where I have to name, this is going to be my call up. All right, I have to type it in exactly as I typed in my multi value list. Synergist, title block. B and in a closed quotation. All right, so as long as this matches perfectly for my call up, so I want my title block. If I if my title block and I bring up the B, I want it to do something. All right, so let's uh, hit return and under this, uh, I'm going to come down to my drawing and I'm going to come over to my drawing snippets and down below you're going to see that it says change title block. I'm going to double click that. Once I double click it, it will insert this snippet wherever my cursor is. All right, so I'm going to double click that and you'll see active sheet title block equals and it says my title block. So what I want to do is put the name of the title block that I want to use. And if I remember, I may not be able to get to it because this window is open and I can't. But this is where I am going to put in the name of the title block that I want it to go active. So this one is Synergist Title Block B. And that is the spelling used and the syntax for the name of the title block under my drawing resources. Okay. So I'm going to click. Uh, return and I'm just going to act return again. I like a little space in between, in between this and this is where I'm going to put my else if. So I can either type in else if or I believe I can go here and I can double click right here. But uh, to tell you the truth, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. Control C. I come down here, Control V. I'll type else in, in front of this. So now there's my else if. So this is going to be my second uh, option. And this is where it's going to be for a title block C. And I'm going to have the name of my title block C here. So I've already got there. So here's my B. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just making sure that my syntax and the letters of the title blocks are right. So there's my B, there's my C. And I'm going to continue this. I'm just going to copy my is elf, control C. All right, I'm just going to come down here, control V. I'm going to hit return a couple times. I'm going to do it a last a second time. And um, if you want to keep your indents all the same, I'll just do that. Now here's my B, there's my C. I'll come back here and here's my D. And I'll backspace and D backspace and this will be my E. So here it is. I have my B, C, D, and E and that, that went pretty quick. And um, this is a nice option um, for changing. That's about it. So like I said before, I have some custom snippets and they're in here. I just, since I use them over and over again, I kind of put them both in the same thing and it is 
this one here update and zoom so all this does again it updates all is uh, updates everything and then it zooms to fit the window so I'm just gonna say save all right and uh, now I'm gonna close it so there's my title block rule so um, let's go into my form and uh, I'm gonna click the form tabs under my logic browser I'm gonna right click and edit my form and in here at the very bottom let's see if I can bring this down a little bit I'm gonna add uh, maybe under my sheet size I'm gonna add my title block so I'm just gonna left click over under my parameters window I'm gonna drag it into my editor and you'll see in my preview that it comes up so let's uh, go in and flex this we're gonna try this out I'm gonna say OK and now I'm going to actually run this rule, run the form. I'll bring it over here, open this up a little bit, and I'm going to go and try my title block D, and there it is. So let's uh, let's match them up here a little bit, and I can. All right, that looks good. So if I go to my title block E, and then I can change that. That looks great. Now don't get me wrong, you can most likely uh, you know, we can write this all in the same rule and uh, we can get these to operate when I go to a sheet size my title block automatically updates um, this this would all be done inside of the uh, one rule I would put the rules I just wrote underneath the title block size and once the sheet size changes the title block automatically changes so that's the way I would normally do it I'm just kinda showing you uh, a little bit different methodology so um, I like I said I don't think this would be the best way I would have all these rules written right underneath my sheet rule so when the sheet size changes title block automatically changes okay I re I made this video I went back uh, started to review it uh, went to lunch and this just kept nagging at me and I just can't let it sit this way so um, I'm gonna go back and address what I most likely should do instead of showing you two rules I want to go back and show that this title block rule and the sheet size rule should all be enrolled in one so with that in mind uh, let's try to resolve this situation so I'm just gonna open up this title block rule and uh, uh, I'm gonna copy I'm gonna copy the rule out and then I'm going to go to my sheet rule and I'm gonna come under here and I'm going to paste it now I just can't uh, have it work this way because there's nothing that's going to trigger the title block so what I need to do is um, I think right here I am going to change if sheet size so let's go there so if the sheet size equals B let's see if I can get this to work then title block will be B so let's uh, let's go in and change this for all of them control C and I'm going to paste it in here for each one and go back and edit so there's B C D and E so I think this will work but so when the sheet size changes and you know, we'll ch we'll pick a, a B C D whatever when that changes it's going to go through that rule start here and then go through the if then else and change the title block to match so let, let's see if we can get this to operate it, uh, so I'm going to save and close I'm going to right click on the title block rule and I'm going to suppress it for now I'm going to go to the form and uh, I'll try it I don't know that's going to make that big of a deal but uh, I'm going to go in here now when I change to a D there I think my 
my title block is you can see that it is updating perfect and that's the way it should be this should be involved all in one so what I would do is remove this I'm gonna say uh, done I'm gonna right click say edit and I would just um, delete this title block and say OK. And that, that's the way it should be done. So now I control the title block and the sheet size all from one operation. All right. And that's easy enough. So it was all done. I can now delete this rule or leave it suppressed. I don't need it anymore. But again, all I did, um, I had the sheet size. I just took the rule we created and if then else sheet size equal, if it's sheet size equals B I want it to select the title block B sheet size C I want it to select the title block C that's the way it should be so it's just was nagging at me so much I couldn't let it rest um, sorry for this interruption and um, I guess that's all I really wanted to say so unfortunately the rest of the video is gonna jump back in you'll probably see that error in there again but this is the way it should have been inserted. So thank you for your patience. Now back to the regular video. All right, so that's one way to do it. Now the other thing is you're gonna, what we've already noticed here is, you know, when I start changing my sheet sizes, uh, my scale gets all, you know, whacked out and that's uh, something that's really undesirable so what if I can change what if I can control my uh, scale as I am changing my sheet size now that that's got a lot of value to it also so I'm going to uh, come back here and um, let's just take a look and I have I've got two views I got view one view two and view one is my master and view two is my isometric up off to the side and they are kind of handled independently so that's one thing that I want to try to remember so let's go in and I am going to um, let's go and well first of all I'm going to look at my uh, my view all right so if I if I right click on on this view and I say edit view um, you're gonna see that my scale is only about one half and um, I'm gonna have to make it smaller than that so anything you create the scale you create is gonna be dependent on the size and the, and the, um, how it changes in your drawing so for me I'm gonna be hanging down around 0.2 to 1 so let's go up I'm going to create a new parameter and this one's going to be a numeric and I'm going to place uh, I'm going to say this scale All right. and in here I'm going to right click and make a multi-value list and I am going to start with whew, I don't know let's say 0.2 and I can put in valid sizes also 0.2 is not necessarily valid but depending on what you're creating you may have to get a little bit so I can say 0.25 and I can go um, right through to whatever size I want and I can say 0.333 I can say uh, you know uh, 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.625 0 0.7 0 0.75 0 0.8 so you're gonna place in values that are useful to you and I'm going to say add and then um, I suppose I'll get rid of the one with the inch mark next to it and um, I'll say OK so this one uh, this scale uh, like I mentioned I got two views I have to apply it and I don't necessarily want both my isometric and my main view the same scale so I can always add a second one so I'm going to add another one. I could say scale. Now you cannot have spaces, so we're going to. I always do underscores, and for this I'll just say ISO for the isometric. And here I will make a multi-value list. And again, you can go through the same thing, 
and I'm going to make this a little bit quicker. 0 0.7, 0 0.8. All right, and again, your scales may differ. You can put them in any uh, any other way you like, and I'll say OK. So I have two scales: a scale uh, for the, my main view and an ice and a scale for my ISO. All right, so uh, I'll say done. And I'm going to go to my iLogic browser, go to my rules, right click, add a rule, and this will be my scale rule. Uh, again, I would normally come in here and um, this would be my declaration. Let's go to my snippets and I am going to say uh, for my views. Uh, let me see which one I think this is going to be active sheet view um, this one here we're gonna say drawing view alright so what I'm just going to do is I'm gonna uh, double click on that place in there so it's drawing view and it says view one and I do it's exactly how I have it written I haven't changed the name of my views in my model browser so this will be view one and I'm going to say um, dot and scale alright so I want the scale parameter command I'm going to say equals and here I want it to equal my scale and that's going to be the actual rule so I'm just going to copy this control C and let me uh, control V and this will be the ISO underscore ISO oops Make sure it is there and it'll go blue you can see right away that it stays brown until it matches one of the parameters that I created so as soon as I type the O it goes it changes color it goes blue and it shows that it's an active and usable parameter so there that's what I want to do I want to uh, I want to run those and um, so now that the scale um, underscore ISO is blue it's an active parameter I've got to go back and make sure that I affect this one is going to be for view 2 so don't forget to make sure I have this will control view 1 will be equal to scale now and view 2 will update to scale underscore ISO so let me uh, save them and I'll say cancel and I'm gonna go back to my form I'm gonna right click on the title block I'm gonna say edit and here's my scale so I'm gonna place the scale in there and I'll place the ISO scale too I suppose and I'll say OK and I'll run it and let's see what it does so I have um, uh, point 0.2 might be a little bit small let's see about point 0.3 and then same thing maybe this and I will bring this down I'm going to zoom this out, bring that one down a little bit. All right. That's uh, That may be a little bit more realistic. I may want to increase this scale just a little bit. Or uh, bring it maybe a lot, I don't know. Bring it up and I can always leave my ISO scale um, a little bit undersized. Uh, it doesn't have to be the prominent view. And if I go back and I change my uh, C size sheet and I'll change my title block to match and now obviously my scales are out of wax so let's go add these uh, maybe a little bit larger so here's some things that you can do right from your drawing and um, I'll place this one a little bit bigger move that back up so here you can affect the scale and move now, yes, there is a rule in here to control, automatically control the placement. Um, that one's a little bit more difficult. It's fine if you use the same part and the same drawing all the time so you can place it. It's only going to be the size that changes. Um, that one takes a little bit. All you have to do is figure out whether it's an XY placement from the center or one of the corners. Uh, it's not real hard to program. It's just that if you change if you change this dramatically, it's it's a lot of back and forth. All right, so there are uh, there are a couple very useful 
um, rules that can change a lot of things in here. Again, I would certainly combine these two, the sheet size and the title blocked automatically update, all right? Uh, that I would put underneath the same rule. Uh, the scales, you may or may not want them this way, but again, you can name, um, you can change the name of these views any way you want. You can name them anything, create as many views as you want, and then also control them inside of, um, so even here, if I come back here and I change this, and I am going to name it main. Now this view, this rule will stop working. I mean, it's not going to work now because it used to be view one, but what I can do is I can come in here and also change this back to main. And now it will work just fine. All right. So, um, you can, again, you can rename these views, you can, but just make sure that you um, you change the name of that as you create it. All right, so uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to do, and um, this is also an additional question that someone asked, uh, what they wanted me to do is how do you add a rule to the form? So that's, um, that's not a, a real difficult thing either. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a new rule. So let's, let's create a rule that I, want, I do want to add a rule to my form. So I'm going to say, um, let's see, um, this is going to be my, my print PDF rule. And uh, I'll just come down here and I'll just come down a little bit. And this rule for my print is going to be up under my uh, documents. All right. And it's going to be uh, file save as. So I'm just going to double click that. And it is giving me a little bit of information here. And it's uh, print this document, save as. And it's saying file new name and extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this. And this is going to be in quotes. And I'm just going to say, well, you know, I'll just say uh, uh, Dave Drawling 1. And then I'm, uh, I need a uh, dot .pdf and then close quote and that's it that's the rule that we're going to uh, use this and you can name this drawing anything you want right here so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save and close I'm gonna go back to my form I'm gonna right click I'm gonna say edit and I'm gonna come to my rules tab and you'll see that my print PDF rule. I'm going to bring that all the way to the bottom. And uh, in the preview, you're going to see, well, it's a little bit different now. Instead of a multi-value selection list or something like that, it's got a it's got a selection bar here. So let me say done. And I am going to run this. And you'll see at the bottom, I have a, a little bar. If I if I click on that bar, what it just did now, and it really doesn't give you, uh, I can probably open that PDF, but I'm going to say done. And let me go to my uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, let's see if I can find that. I think it's, um, um, okay, looking around for this, uh, I'm not sure why it, ducked it down under here, but here is um, that drawing just created. If I double click on it, let's try to knock this down a little bit so you can see it. And you'll see that it, it prints the PDF uh, that we just created. All right. So um, it's not real hard to make the rules in there. You can make some real valuable rules in there, whether it controls the sheet size, the scale, um, 
printing, uh, where to print it, um, things like that. So there's a lot you can do inside of the drawing to make your life a little bit easier. So I hope this was a, a bit of a help and a little bit of an eye opener that uh, I think a lot of people forget about this, uh, this side of it. So um, as always, I encourage you to leave a comment below, make any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see. And um, again, take care. And uh, until later, this is Dave Briner.